This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to put their head down and press through. No. The Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done. He showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me today again on Preach Be a Voice, Not an Echo. For those of you who do not know me, I am Ambassador Chantro Davis. Today is October the 21st of 2019. It is 11.05 a.m. Central Standard Time. Bring your hearts and minds together on one accord in prayer, for there is no time and there is no space in the Spirit. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that we are alive for such a time as this. Father God, thank you that we awake because you sustained us, Father God. Thank you for your goodness this day, Father God. Thank you for your benefits this day, Father God. For we forget not all your benefits, Father God. We bless you with all our soul, Father God. We forget not all the benefits, Father God. Who forgiveth all our iniquities, who healeth all our diseases, who redeemeth our life from destruction, who crowneth us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things, that our youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all those who are oppressed. You made known your ways unto Moses, your acts unto the children of Israel. Make known to us your ways this day, Father God. Make us of quick understanding that we will walk in your paths rightly, Father God. Be our protector and our defender and our champion this day, Father God, for our expectancies of you. Our hope is in you, Father God, who can stand before a living God. You are higher than all heights, Father God. You are all loving, all wise, all sufficient, unparalleled, unprecedented, unchangeable, inexhaustible, Father God. You are impurely powerful, Father God, and you are mortally graceful, Father God. We thank you for your grace, Father God, that covers us all in all, Father God. We receive the fullness of your grace, the fullness of your benefits, the fullness of your blessing this day, Father God. We thank you for wisdom, Father God, that is from above, and we rebuke all earthly, sensual, and devilish wisdom, Father God, in the name of Jesus, awakening us a pure heart and a pure mind that we have pure expression of you in all things, Father God. Make us holy conduits by way you are able to move through us to get to others, Father God, by the fire of the Holy Spirit within us, burning within outwardly, Father God, in the name of Jesus, forge the character of Christ upon us, Father God. Let us apply and appropriate the full arm of God rightly, Father God, by way of living and being, Father God. Help us not to, not to deny you in works and actions, Father God, in the ways of living and being, Father God. In the name of Jesus, help us, Father God, to exude you and all that you are, Father God. Help us to make Christ tangible, Father God, to people in this earth, Father God. For we are ambassadors, Father God, in the Christ stead, Father God. So help us to be that, Father God, in spirit and in truth this day, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you contend with those who contend with us, who fight against those who fight against us, and that you see it righteous to grant tribulation to those who trouble us, Father God. So trouble our trouble this day, Father God. Trouble our troubles in, trouble in every atmosphere, every realm, and every dimension, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus, you said those who gathered against us will not be by you, and what you would cause them to do is fall for our sakes, Father God. So anybody who has arrayed themselves against our destiny, against our productivity, Father God, against our momentum, Father God, and all that that is in you, Father God, caused them to fall for our sake, Father God, in the name of Jesus. For your plans for us are good, a plans of hope and future and expected in, Father God. We decree you expected in over our mind, over our hearts, over our souls, over our marriages, Father God, over our will, Father God. We decree you expected in over our day, over our way, and our destiny, and all that that means, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. So we have a good future, Father God, according to thy word, Father God. We receive the fullness of the blessing, the fullness of the benefits, and the fullness of the grace, Father God. Help us to receive you wholly, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we may move forth in wholeness of heart and of sound mind, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for Christ came to give us life and more abundantly, Father God. Help us to have abundant grace, Father God, abundant blessings, abundant provision, Father God, that we may work heartily with our hands the thing that is good that we have to give to another, Father God. Help us to move forth, Father God. Help us to esteem others better than ourselves and not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to, Father God. We bind mercy and truth about our neck and write it up on the tables of our heart, Father God. In the name of Jesus, awaken us a pure mind, a pure heart that we have pure expression of you, Father God. We prophesy right words and do season over our mouth, Father God, a mouth full of grace and season with salt, that we know how to answer every man, Father God. I think that we have a mouth and wisdom that our adversaries can neither gain, save, nor resist. We have an unction from the Holy One, knowing all things. But Father, we don't have the mind of who known the mind of Christ that they can instruct them, Father God. But you said we have the mind of Christ. We hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart, Father God. And in the name of Jesus, we command this flesh to stand down, that the spirit man can stand up, that you can rightly exude through us, Father God. Holy conduits move through us to get to others rightly. 
In the name of Jesus, Father God, we bind up every self would way, Father God, all selfish ambition, Father God. I bind up the spirit of fear, doubt, unbelief, strife, contention, Father God, comparison, Father God, litigation, Father God. I bind them up and I dismantle them in the name of Jesus, Father God. The spirit of unforgiveness, Father God, bitterness, Father God, contention, Father God. I bind them up and I cast them out for they have no place in this heart or in the body of Christ, Father God. In the name of Jesus, awaken in us pure love, Father God, and pure unity of spirit, Father God. Uncover all those who were sent of the enemy, every lie of the enemy that came as a person, place, thing, or instruction. We, Father God, we we reject them, we eject them, Father God, uncover them and remove them. Let the burden remove and yoke destroy and anoint and find them, Father God. Any person, place, a thing, or entity in any realm, any dimension that's become a burden in our life or a yoke about our neck, we decree it removed and decree it destroyed according to the anointing and according to thy word, Father God. You always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you've already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of you who called us to glory and virtue, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you who begun this good work in us will continue to the day of Christ, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we live to your right way of being, Father God. God. We put power to remove ourselves from any situation, situation under the will of the Father, Father God. In the name of Jesus, that we move rightly. We order our steps rightly, Father God. We don't move with the crowd. We move according to your voice. For the voice of a stranger, we will not follow. And those who are yours, hear your voice, Father God. In the name of Jesus, burn off all the dross out of our ears, Father God. We cast out every lying, sign, and whispering voice in our ear in the name of Jesus, Father God. And let your words be heard clearly, Father God, in our heart. In the name of Jesus, we draw near you, Father God, that you draw near unto us, Father God. We must remain current with you and with you at all times. In the name of Jesus. And we prophesy we will be at the right place at the right time before the right people in the right state of being and in the right state of mind, Father God. For the steps of these good men and women and my steps are ordered of the Lord, Father God. And we thank you that as we slept last night, you kept us from our purpose. You hid pride and you sealed your instructions, your blueprint. And we thank you that by your grace, we will walk those blueprints out in perfection, Father God. Help us to yield to your voice, Father God. Not our own way, Father God. For you said it is not in us to know our own ways, Father God. But you made us, Father God, and you will birth us and you instruct us. For our expectancy is of you. Our hope is in you. We trust in your life. We trust in your word, for your word is effective, it is alive, it is energizing, and it is always enough, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that when all else fails, your word will remain, Father God, for there is no failure in you. We bless you with our lives, Father God. Take us to the level of excellency in Christ Jesus, Father God, by way of your spirit, and we present our bodies, Father God. I seal this prayer in the name of Christ Jesus, and I say amen. Okay, y'all. It's been in the press, because if I didn't have to fight so hard to get this message going, I'd be already, I'd be halfway through it by now. That's how hard I had to fight to get this uh, a video camera up, and then a case of unbelievable sneezes. <laughs> Y'all have no idea I would have been done by now with this particular message. Yes, I would have been done with this particular message by now, but that's just how it goes. I'm going to get right into this message. Uh, thank you for those of you who is your first time listening. I uh, beseech you, there are hundreds of messages on here and they are all from the Lord because I, I keep telling you messages don't, you don't just sit around and dig up what you're going to minister. Or you don't minister based on wounds or minister based on who offended you that day or minister based on what you saw on the news that day, short of what the Lord speaks to you. Because sometimes you'll see something, you'll be watching something and he'll see if you awake and he will speak to you and that's when you minister. Um, as I did this morning, as I was preparing even to get to this message, he dropped one in my spirit as I prayed to begin the other message and said I had to do it first. Um, it's a warning. And I want y'all to circulate that thing. The Lord has gave many of you time to leave people alone. He's given many of you time to get your heart right concerning someone. And I'm telling you, people, the Lord has put people around me. And because of what entered their heart concerning me, he removed them. It's because of what their mouth is praising me. Their mouth is with me. They're saying things that make them make would make you believe. And some of this, this is true for some of you, but I have to speak because according to myself and you can learn from this and it, everything on outwardly, people would think they with you and think they for you and y'all together. But when it's a hard here, they had to be moved. It has happened more than once because of what they feel in their heart toward me. No matter what their mouth is saying and what they're doing, it's what's in their heart. He's going to remove many because of what's in their heart towards you. It is happening back to back. Just because you're around people, or you know people, don't mean you're in, in the place you're supposed to be in. And just because you share the same soil, don't mean you have the same assignment. It doesn't mean, not mean you're going to walk with them. Because what's in their heart towards you will not allow them to walk with you. And they will have to be removed. It has happened more than once. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm going to get into this message, y'all. Because I had to press to even be able to breathe. To get... <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> but the grace of God will keep you as you go. Does anybody know that if you, you fight in allergies and all that, it's, kind of, it's hard to minister when you everything closed up and you can't breathe. It's rough. But you push through. Excuse me, y'all. I really don't mean to do that, but I, I have to press through. So the enemy want me to do. He want me to stop. It's not going to happen. 
So y'all got to bear with me today. Okay. The name of this message I need y'all to get. Uh, uh, let me say this. I got to say this before I start. Okay. We have to understand that our victory is in Christ. Literally in what he did. But physically in him. This. The battle of this life. Is to remain with him. You have a thinker, fill a chooser. You have a tripod being. You have the uh, the spirit, soul, and body. As I've said before, the enemy is trying to flood you with his thoughts and his emotions so that you can speak his will. Because nothing lives here. Nothing manifests here. Nothing is effective here but by way of the power of the tongue. The tongue pierces the veil to bring all things from the unseen to the seen. So where you give your attention to is what's going to come out of you. What you give your attention to, you tell to live. What you ignore, you tell to die and get away from you. So if you're not paying attention to the things of the Lord, you tell a net spirit in you to be quenched. If you're giving all your attention to the world, that's what's going to be most alive in you. I told you that many of you before you came, he said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. He knew you. And he put particular things in you that are meant to manifest in certain seasons of life. The enemy's job is to get you out of time and out of alignment, which is out of order, which is in the darkness. OK, I, I have to keep telling y'all this. What's in you has specific times that it is to manifest. So you could be at the right place at the right time before the right people in the right state of being and in the right state of mind. Because like I said, some of you will be in the right place, but you didn't allow him to process. So you can't even receive, receive good people or good things. You can't even see it because you're not processed. And some of you end up in the right place at the right time. Uh, 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 should I say in the wrong place with the right mind? So you you allowed the Lord to develop you, but at the last minute you let the enemy get you off. So you were you ain't supposed to be, and you got uh the right mind and the wrong people around you. And then many of you got the wrong mind, and you got good people around you. you can't receive nobody. I, I watch it back to back. I, I can't even count. It, I, it's crazy. The enemy is crafty and he is slick. But the whole time is for you to stay with him by step by step, day by day. I have to use myself as an example because I have bought gifts and different things for people and. The, per the people clearly are sure they're not with me, okay? But because I knew my intent to give them gifts um, and it's the right thing to do, I went ahead, even though the Holy Spirit overrode me and was telling me not to. But I was thinking, am I doing this in the right heart? But that was an overriding. I use the same example of people on 9-11 that went to the building. It's a good thing to go to work because the Lord tells us to go to work. But some of them did not go that day because the Holy Spirit told them not to. You have to know when he's overrode your goodness because the enemy will use your goodness to destroy you. He will use your heart to destroy you because you don't know when to walk away because the Holy Spirit, he knows your heart that you meant well toward them people. But now their heart is not right toward you and he overrides you. You have to know when he didn't overrode it, even though it's a good thing. OK, the enemy is continually trying to get you out of time and out of alignment because you, if you end up in a season unprepared for it, you will fall and start over. Because you got winter, spring, summer, fall. Now, rather when you're in the uh, winter, whether you prefer for spring is coming. When you're in the fall, whether you prepare for winter, it's coming. So his job is to get you undeveloped in offense and distractions and being with the wrong people and around the wrong thing and not allow him to pull out of you. Then you end up in this season unprepared for it and around you go again until your time is up or until you get given over because you're not listening. You will quench the Holy Spirit. And you're in trouble at that point. The whole thing is staying in step with Christ and staying in him. But so many people are self-willed. They're, they're self-driven. They want to go where they want, when they want. They want to do what looks popular because the crowd is doing it. I'm going to do a short video after this, and I'm going to tell you what the Lord spoke to him. He gave me two scriptures. I can't do what everybody else do. So y'all not going to see me on the street with cameras no more. I don't care what nobody else is doing. He won't allow me, and I know it's a reason. I will only be out there when he send me, and it will not be with a video camera. The Lord will have to specifically be and did it. And if he's doing it, it's because it's going to be bringing him the most glory. I will be out, but y'all will not see it on camera. Okay? I can't do what other people do. He, 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 he's dividing right now, okay? Let me get into this message. I hope I, because y'all, y'all, I want y'all to understand. It's about staying in timing uh, and the happenings of the Lord. But I'll tell you, time and chance is the season and the happenings of the Lord in your life. And that's why even when you deliver a message at the right time, it has the most effect. You can say you can have the right thing. And if you deliver it before the Lord told you to deliver it, it will not yield what he intended it to yield. 
Even when you correct somebody, if it ain't the time he told you to do it, it won't yield what it should. You see plenty going on, but if the Lord does not tell you to speak on it, be quiet. And when he says speak, do it without a second thought, because no matter what they say or do, that word went against them. But when you do it on your own, it's something different, okay? Excuse me. I'm about to get to this message. Oh my goodness, I have to get to this message. Oh, okay. Had to pause it again, y'all. I told you, there's no, I'm fighting it today, boy. Okay? I'm going to get right into this message. This message is because I, I need y'all to be aware. The enemy is so crafty, y'all. Some of y'all could be fooled because it's distance. He's so crafty. What I tell you, I don't care how good somebody preach. I don't care. Oh, God. Let me stay on course. I don't care how good somebody preaches, how good an orator they are, because that's what the enemy is. He has preachers and servants and apostles, and they got so many people fooled. The numbers, like I said before, when the Lord spoke that to me, a lot of y'all think these numbers mean growth, and that growth, that, that what y'all think is growth is actually infection. That's how many people they're infecting. Not growth. That's how the infection is spread. Because the Lord said, if they hate me, they're going to hate you. So people are being lifted up high. I don't care if the words sound good. Y'all better pay attention. Y'all better pay attention. Okay? Let me get to this message. Uh, it might keep this title. It might not. Because <laughs> titles change as you minister because the Lord keeps speaking. They are servants of corruption, yet they promise you liberty. They are servants of corruption, yet they promise you liberty. Brute beasts, the Lord calls them. Let me get right into the scripture. I'm going to go line by line on this, or shall I say scripture per scripture. Second Peter 2 and 19. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom, of whom, for of whom a man is overcome. For of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought into bondage. For of whom a man is overcome, okay, the same is brought into bondage. While they promise them liberty, they are servants of corruption. They are yielding to corruption, which means that they have been overcome by it. If they're moving forth into things of corruption, move of, uh, their mouth is corruption, their life is corruption. I, I can't even believe some of the things people going forth in. Believing that they belong to Christ and you looking at the way they dress, they got chaos, they shacking up, they fornicating, they dress like hookers in the pulpit and y'all actually believe them a service of the Lord? Those are servants of corruption. And they promising you liberty. And I'm telling you that in the world what looks like liberty is bondage. Okay. Let me go to 2 Peter. This is the context of it. Uh, uh, that was verse 19. But this is verse 2 because I'm going to go through 2. I'm literally going through 2 Peter 2. Okay? But they are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. There are false teachers among you. Oh, y'all. Anybody can open up a book and read from it. That's not the word of the Lord. It is the scriptures. That's why so many people are fooled. Oh, Lord, I will not. Because the Lord calls us to correct privately. Y'all have got to pay attention to who you're listening to. It looks good. It looks bold. Know the difference between a forward mouth and a bold mouth. They're going their own way. Because it looks good. And many of them doing it from a spirit of rejection because they need to be accepted. They need to, be, they need to look as if they're doing something. This is how the enemy gets so many people. This is not an easy thing to do. And most people who are called in, they usually resisted it. <laughs> oh, let me keep going. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable. Oh, I want y'all to catch what this is, okay? Who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. And bring up on themselves swift destruction. Oh boy, that makes you think of the damnable doctrine. The doctrine of devils. I'm going to have a whole message on that. I'm going to have to put that in the, uh, the one that I got on uh, the difference between demon possession, vexation, and oppression. Demon vexation versus uh, oppression versus possession. The damnable doctrine is that 
that because if you say you can't have a devil, that's a lie. Devils had in your flesh. That's what's wrong with most Christians. If you tell them that they can't have a devil if they got the Holy Spirit, they they, they, they don't look to be delivered. Let me stay on course. Who probably should bring in damnable heresies and even denying the Lord that bought them and bring up on themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. By reason of whom the way of truth. They speak in evil of Jesus. They, you can't use the name Jesus. It got to be his Hebrew name. You better recognize that he black. These are damnable doctrines. I've watched it happen. They won't even use the name Jesus no more. They bringing that in privately. They ah uh, yes, Lord. Not only let me get this straight. Even the people who don't mind you saying Jesus, but they say everybody can come in too. That's the same. That's the same. Let us all come in and worship together. It can be Buddha. It can be Muhammad. It can be the Mahadi. It can be Jesus. All of us in together because these are just the different ways He comes to us. But it's one God, and these are just different paths we get here. It's one way. Even that. Is denying his name. There is only one Savior, only one Lord, only one King of Kings, only one name by way men must be saved. So if you come in and say, Oh, let's just come in with tolerance and let them come in and believe what they believe because it's just one God and they just call them something different. That's a lie. That is a damnable heresy. And they denied the Lord who bought them with his blood. Okay. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Many are following this. I'm watching y'all, everybody coming in. If you circulating their videos, you own it, you listening, you are partakers. He said, if somebody come bringing some other doctrine, not to bid them guard speed. So if you are circulating their videos, you are have become partaker of their ignorance. You have become partakers of their damnation because you are sharing their video. You are bidding them guard speed. You are in agreement with them. Okay, let's go. Let's move to verse three. Insincere words. They use insincere words to fool you. Verse three, and through coveted covetousness. Shall they with feigned words, they coveting, what are they coveting? They're coveting your admiration. They're coveting the crowds. They're coveting the thumbs up. They're coveting the amen that they can preach. Oh, they're they coveting the words of praise of men. So with feigned words, what's feigned? Insincere. They make merchandise of you. Many of y'all sooner to these dead ministries. Most of the ministries on YouTube are not of the Lord. And y'all pouring all y'all money into them because they tell you what you want to hear. Okay? They make merchandise of you. T-shirts constantly. Everybody ain't been assigned to make T-shirts. They make a merchandise of you. Okay? Whose judgment now of a long time lingered. They judgment lingered. They lingered not. And their damnation slumbered not. So their... Um, Judgment lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. It is up on it. This, this word is going for now. Y'all have got to pay attention. These people are promising you liberty with the things they tell you that's coming. They always got a word of prophecy that's good. Y'all look around at this earth to see what's going on. This place is getting more and more wicked. They're killing more and more children. It's more and more perverse. they lifting up homosexuality. They're teaching it in the school. They got churches of Satan up in the school. And y'all really believe all good is coming. You still living like hell, but they promising you blessings. You someone who has tickling ears if you believe that. You know you gossiping. You know you lying. You know you got hate in your heart. You know you are contrary, but they're telling you you blessed. Wake up. Wake up. Let's move to verse four. The title. Examples of the kind of punishment that is coming. Receive this word. Listen to this word. Okay. For if God spurred not the angels to sin, okay, he didn't spur the angels to sin, but cast them down to hell, and that's Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, they're going to be judged. They're just being held there until they judgment, okay? And spurred not the, he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, new beginnings, a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher of righteousness. This is a foreshadow, y'all. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, 
condemned them with the overthrow. He overthrew them. Many of you are about to be overthrown. It will start in your physical house, in your house house, and the house of God. Because that's where judgment starts. Because people who don't believe in Christ already judged. That's why he said judgment shall begin with the household. Because the people don't believe Christ, they already judged. They ain't got but one answer. That's hell. They ain't got nowhere else to go. Ain't no in between. Okay? And turning cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, this is verse 6, into ashes, condemned them with the overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. They were an example. What once was will be. There is nothing new under the sun. No, he said he, no, it's going to be some terrible floods. It's going to be some floods that take out whole cities. He said he would never bring, I saw Florida go under. And parts of California will fall into the ocean. He showed me Florida going down three times. And the last time he showed me it went down three different dreams. Well, more than three dreams after that. But the initial ones, it went down, came up. That tells me water going to cover it. Went down, came up, water going to cover it. Went down, come up, water going to cover it. But the last time in one dream, it went down, it came up. It went down, it came up, it went down, it was gone. Okay? It's going to be some terrible floods. It's going to cover. I saw a wave go from one side of Florida all the way to the other key. And the Lord showed me this. Nobody knows the timing. Okay? That's for the Lord. My job is to give the word. Okay? And they, they were examples. Because the Lord cannot not punish wickedness. He's a just God. He gives time for repentance. That's the difference between grace. All you, you, you your devils don't want to tell people grace covers all your sin. It allows you to sin. Grace gives you the power to obey. Jesus was the example. Because in the old days or under the law, the moment you did the wickedness, you fell dead. Grace allows you to get up and keep trying. Get up and keep trying as he perfects you. You didn't have that then. Grace gives you the power to obey. Not allows you to do it anyway because he paid for it all. So you can live like a hellion shack up and do your little bell worship and anything else you want to do. Go to church talking about people lying, cheating, stealing. And grace covers me. God know my heart. He said there's nothing good in it. That's why he has to change it. Some of your heart is hard and it takes the heart and ground has to be broken up. Which means it ain't going to be an easy time. But it's worth it. That's like suffering a, a, a severed hand uh, rather than the permanency of your whole body being tossed into hell. How long will you love simplicity? How long will you love easy living, easy life, no turmoil? You should thank God that he strengthens you to adversity. Because those who are not strengthened to adversity are the one gonna be putting guns in their mouth when the stuff hit this when the stuff hit the fan, they're not gonna be able to deal with it. They have not been strengthened against it. You are not strong in nothing you have not been tried in. The fellowship of the suffering, like I said, brings it from her to your heart. Wisdom talks to you through it and strengthens you in it. Let me keep going. Delivered. Uh, 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 yeah, from Nangali. He delivered the just lot and he'll deliver us. I want y'all to catch this. What once was will be. Don't think it's not terrible turmoil coming up on this earth. Yet we continually pray that the Lord will be merciful. We continually pray that hearts will turn, but the Lord also know who is not going to turn. That's why this stuff is coming. But we are to continually, he says, seek justice and love mercy. So we're going to cry out for mercy until the Lord eventually will tell you to stop. Oh, don't think he won't tell you to stop praying for these people. You pray until he tells you no more. Because it'll come to the point where he said don't pray no more. Not for them. Okay? Verse 7. He delivered just Lot and he'll deliver his just now. And delivered just Lot. Who was vexed. How many of y'all vexed with this filth? You can't turn on a TV without seeing a butt, a thong, a breast, a homosexual, a perverse couple. Everything hanging out. I don't care if it's a video advertising pudding. They'll make it vulgar. Why do y'all think they're doing this? The more you give your attention to this world, he is dispersing you of the light is in you until you are darkened enough. He's dispersing the light that you came with because we came down from the father of lights. But he's dispersing that light and filling you with darkness until that demand on it comes and you will find yourself doing what you never thought you would do. Y'all gonna keep hearing me say this. The more you don't allow the Lord to correct you, you get darker and darker. That's what the end days is going to be. Those who are full of light going to get lighter and lighter. Those who are full of darkness going to get darker and darker until they are over 
come. Those of y'all who belong to Christ should be vexed by what y'all see going on, okay? And he delivered he delivered just Lot. Not just him. Just mean righteous. It seems like it's like just Lot. <laughs> uh, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Looking at all this. He was right inside of him. I want y'all to understand. Don't y'all understand this is where it's going? It ain't about love. Don't be fooled. Them men y'all see on 300 that was all buff and, and, and some of the most violent warriors you and, and effective warriors you had ever seen in your life was going home laying with each other. They making y'all think they timid and oh girl, child, I just want to do your hair. That's not what it's going to be. Y'all better read the story of Lot. He said the cries of the people entered into the earth of the Lord. He sent them two angels down. They're like, is it as bad as I'm hurt? Because he won't look at them. He said, is it as bad as I'm hurt? They were raping cats in the middle of the, the, the square. Read the story. They said children, young and old men, all of them surrounded the house to violate and rape these two angels. That's where it's going. Straight nudity in public, nudity in church, breasts out and rape. Don't think it ain't coming. Don't be fooled. It ain't about love. It never was about love. Because when they look at your righteous merge, it shines a light that they're not. So they have to make laws so that they feel more comfortable in their sin. And they have to bring you into agreement. Don't do that. This is the result. Okay? This will be the result. For anybody who agrees with it. Even if you agree with it in your heart. They ain't hurting nobody. It's just okay. You will be judged the same way. You heard me? You ain't got to be doing it. If you agree with it, that's what you judge by. As a man thinks in his heart. The thoughts of your heart will be judged. That means if you never said it out your mouth, if you didn't clean it her, you're going to be judged by it. Okay? He delivered just, just lots from the filthy conversation of the wicked. That's lifestyles. For the righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. You just think about this. This man hearing people raped in the street every night. People beat up, people robbed. And could you imagine, you hearing screams of people being violated and raped every night, all day. Could you imagine? Those of us who are here long enough, you'll see it again. Okay? The Lord knoweth not, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment. To be punished, just like he did the angels. Y'all, look at this whole thing. He didn't spur the angels. He cast them off into hell uh, to change the Tartarus to, to be reserved until the day of judgment. The finality of the judgment. That's the finality of the judgment. Now, they are judged right now, which is why they tied up. That's a judgment. Right and wrong. And this is what you're going to pay for it right now. Get down chained into hell. Some of you, judgments are going to go forth now. You're going to suffer her. But it's the finality of judgment is that they're being reserved for. You're going to be judged her. But the finality of judgment then, okay? I want y'all to catch this. Don't act like you don't judge now. Those of you can't judge me, preachers. We're going to stay on course, okay? The brute beast. And this is what the Lord calls you. Those of you who believe this is okay, you live with it, you're going around doing these things, living ungodly, uh, bringing forth teachers that with itchy ears wanting to hear what you got to say, ganging up on other ministries, going and uh, dividing. Brute beast. Tickling people's ears, telling them what they want to make merchandise of them. Brute beasts. Telling them they getting blessed every day when they living like hellions. Brute beasts. You a brute beast. You know they're on their way to hell, but you don't care. You need their likes. You need the fallen. You need the thumbs up. You need to sell your t-shirts. You need to sell anything you do. You making merchandise of them. Brute beasts. When you know you're, you're a servant of corruption. You a servant of corruption. Brute beast, verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. You despise government, even law her, because he tells you to obey the laws of the land. We're not talking about perverse laws. The, 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 the devil is a lie because he said he, the enemy, that's what he's doing. He's going to change uh, times and laws to make you look unjust. OK, we talk about the law of the Lord. You despise government. You are presumptuous. Oh, those, you, those of you who didn't listen to that message about presumptions, the sin of presumption, you better go catch it. Because many of you have presumed against your own brothers and sisters 
and that will not go unpunished or unpaid. I promise you. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. Listen to this. You self-willed. And, and many of y'all are self-willed and got people following y'all ministries and the Lord didn't send you nowhere. It's you. You put yourself out there. Self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries and they call it, they call it, I'm anointed to pull down and call out. The devil's a lie. They speak evil of dignities, whereas angels are greater in power and might. They bring not railing accusa accusations against them before the Lord. You hear me? But these as natural, that's their flesh. They doing that in the flesh. That is not the spirit having people do that. That's the flesh. But these as natural brute beasts, the Lord says you are brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed. They speak evil of things that they understand not. That's why they do it. They move them forth and they lack understanding. They What they think is zeal is frowardness and self-willedness. Okay? They brute beasts. They made to be taken and destroyed. They speak evil of things that they understand not and shall utterly perish. You shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Many of these people go tall and y'all think they're really doing something for the Lord. And they're going to perish in their own corruption if they do not repent. Verse 13. And shall receive, they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. What is the reward of unrighteousness? Damnation and hell. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the day, spots they are. They spots. They, they come in among us spotting up our garments. There are spots. Spots they are, blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings. They sporting themselves, they brag and they building themselves up with their own deceivings while they feast with you. They, these are people sitting with you, listening to the ministry messages, sharing ministry message with you, claiming that y'all gonna walk on the streets together, claiming that y'all gonna preach together, y'all doing conferences with them. These people, they feasting with you. But there are spots on your garment. Find the spots on your garment. Y'all heard this word, find the spots on your garments, the brute beast spot. Yep, that's the title. Brute beast. They are spots on your garments. Find them and remove them. These are people that look just like you. What did I tell you between the wheat and the turf? When they are young, they look just alike. But what happens? I didn't witness this more than once, multiple times. When people weren't around me, they came around. That light will make manifest what's still in them. And they will turn on you without cause. It's the light in you. It is the light in you. As you grow, if you keep growing and growing because you're inobedient. And they still going their own way, doing their own thing. Eventually, they will be cut off. It will be very clear. A very clear difference. But y'all don't understand. I've already delivered more than one message on this. They are kingdom parents. They mimic what they hear. They mimic what they see. They repeat what other people say. They steal the words of God from other people. And they have fooled many. These are brute beasts. Beloved, find the spots on your garment. Find the blemishes on your garment. Those who feast with you. Spots and blemishes of your love. Let's go to verse 14. Eyes full of adultery, forsaking the right way. Hello. Say about sex. Those plenty of y'all doing that. Their eyes are full of adultery because they have forsaken the right way. They go in their own way. They, 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 that's an adulteress or an adulterer. Having eyes full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin. Beguiling. They are beguiling. That's bewitchment. What did I tell y'all? It's a message every time they see something. What did I tell you what beguiling is? Whether they rule it over you with fear, with intimidation, with the word and manipulation, they are beguiling. This is witchcraft. They are charismatic witch. This word begins to be practicing charismatic and blind witch. You're blind when y'all not innocent no more either because the Lord is coming for you. Because if you're listening to him, you're going to be knowing what's in your heart and you're going to sit your butt still and let him clean it out. So the word finna come up on y'all too. Everything that you send it out to somebody else finna take you. Everything that's coming out your heart against somebody else with envy, jealousy, strife, unforgiveness, bitterness, and rottenness to the bone is finna take you. 
You're blind witches. You're not innocent no more either because the Lord is trying to clean you up and you won't sit still. Charismatic one, using scriptures to intimidate people. Let me keep going. They are beguiling, unstable souls. What do you see? They everywhere. The Lord said this today. Oh, well, maybe it was this. The Lord ain't schizophrenic. He, he ain't confused. And he is not the author of confusion. They're unstable souls. And a the heart they have exercised with covetous, covetous, covetous practices. They are cursed children. Because if you don't allow him to clean you up, clean you up, you're you going to abide in the curse. Why are you cursed? You got your mouth on people. That brings a curse. You contrary to the Lord. Bring, that brings a curse. You self-willed. That's a curse. You going your own way. That's a curse. You're not seeking the Lord. That's a curse. You bring up on yourself damnable ways. Damnable heresies. What's damnable? Stopped. You don't think it's cursed to be blocked and stopped? You can't receive the flow. I told you that you acknowledge him in all your ways and he directs your paths. What is a path? It's an established way of travel and access. So when you offer that path, you ain't got no access. That's damnable. You're damned. You're stopped. You can't receive. It don't mean he didn't stop giving. You can't receive. Okay? Let me go. Eyes full of adultery. Let me keep going. Verse 15. Which have forsaken. They have forsaken the right way. They go on their own way. Most of the, most of the channels y'all own. They didn't go on their own way. But it sounds so good. They look so good. They dress so nice. They so kind. I like they smile. They're encouraging. Sharp correction. Where there's no conviction, there's no spirit. I don't mean bold talk. Conviction. Cut. And even when you burn fruit, guess what he do? He purge you some more so you can bring forth more fruit. You better learn to love correction because it's the only way you'll be perfected to walk with the Savior. It's the only way you will be perfected to walk with the King. Know him in the, fellow, in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Correction. And many of you run from it. Okay? Which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray following the way of Balaam the son of Bozar, who loved the wages, they like the wages of unrighteousness. What's the wages of unrighteousness? Not just money, things, merchandise, praises of people, being lifted up by people. Them are wages of unrighteousness. But the end of that wage is death. Seem fun for a season, okay? Okay? Verse 16, but was rebuked for his iniquity. This is iniquity, y'all. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade him madness of the prophet. How a donkey is correcting a prophet. That's how far. And this was somebody that was a, a, a powerful prophet and got perverted by money and fame and people. I'm watching it, y'all. Oh, let me stop right here for a minute. This is why I pray regularly. I don't want to be lifted up. I don't need none of y'all praise. All I need is to deliver what the Lord tell me to do. This word going to do what it's supposed to do. Because I've watched people. And at one point, they had light on them. I kid you not. And it makes me pray, keep me stealth, Lord. Keep me stealth. Keep me hidden in your holiness. Make me a silent killer. <laughs> keep Make me a silent, deadly killer in the kingdom. I don't need to be lifted up by me. Because I don't care how many people said, I'll watch it, y'all. And it just makes me draw closer to him. Keep me stealth. Not that I'm afraid. Stealth. Because I've watched people who I know had the spirit on. I, it was a light on. And I, I can't count. Y'all don't understand. If you got eyes to see, you'll be able to see. And they started getting all these hits and start blowing up and you see them everywhere. And it ain't on them no more. They have been changed by the praise of men. And I say, Lord, be it far from me. Be it far from me. I keep watching it happen. And it just makes me draw closer to the Lord. I don't want that. I'll be hated unto glory. Or you're going to be loved unto death. You hear me? Hated unto glory. Or loved unto death. I'll be hated unto glory. Let me keep going. Y'all don't even understand. Let me go. Okay. This is what the Lord calls them. He forbade. The donkey forbade the madness of the prophet. What's so tripped out? Is the donkey saw the angel and the prophet didn't. The donkey's spiritual eyes saw 
<laughs> saw the angel. He was about to get smoked. Okay, let me read verse 17. These are wells without water. Y'all heard that? These are empty. And the Lord tells us we have the wells of living water flowing from our mouth, for, speaking forth the spirit of goodness and truth. These people are wells without water. So what are they ministering to you? They wells without water. That's without the spirit. That's without the spirit, y'all. I've seen people praying in the spirit. And if you listen, it's not the spirit. Listen to them pray. A lot of people have learned to pray in the spirit. They were never baptized. They've learned to try to mimic what they hear other people say. That's why it all sounds the same. People do, people, when you get around, listen to them praying in the spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to know it ain't the spirit. Let me drop that though like it's hot. Let me keep on going. There are clouds that are carried away with the tempest. That's why you see them everywhere. Excuse me. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. The mist of darkness. I'm telling y'all, I have literally seen that. It's darkness that you can feel. It hurts. Okay? And they are reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. That's the biggest, boldest mouth. And the Lord said, you bet not touch and you bet not this and this. And everything is always big and loud. Pay attention. Okay? Swelling words of vanity. That means they're meaningless. That should tell y'all vanity ain't got nothing to do with looks. Meaningless words. They allure through the lust of the flesh. They allure you. They draw you through everything that's in you. The spirit, let me, ah, that's what the familiar spirits are. They know every hurt. They know every wound. They know everything your family did. They know everything your family touched from generation after generation. So they know what the tip you with. So they know who to send right across your path to speak to the wickedness in you, to speak to the darkness in you, to speak to the unhealed wounds, to speak to the cuts that are still in you, to speak to the bruises, to speak to the putrefying of your sores. He knows who to put before you. Why? Because the familiar spirits have followed your whole bloodline and what you have not allowed the Lord to clean up is still there. And that's why you were able to hear these people. Examine. I want y'all to listen. Okay. They carried away with tempest in whom the mist of darkness. For when they speak, they speak swelling words of vanity. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantingness, wantingness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Those who are clean escaped from them, okay? Promising liberty. They promise you liberty through servants of corruption. Though they servants of corruption, they promise you liberty. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. Those of you who are following these ministries, you are in their bondage. You are overcome by them, by their words, and you will be brought into bondage by them. Which means their reward will be your reward. Their reward will be your reward. Then the Lord put something in you. And he implanted more in you when you came to him. And who breathes on it is who it's going to yield to. So if the, the, the Lord, if you got a, a, a man or woman of God with the spirit breathing on it with that word, that's what it's going to yield. If you got servants of corruption of the enemy breathing on what's in you, that's who it's going to yield to. Many of you are yielding what you're listening to. That's why your life ain't going nowhere. You're listening to people that sound good. Look at your life. And if nothing in your life and you're obeying the word of God, and man, you ain't doing nothing in the dark on your own, still doing filth. Y'all know what I mean. Don't be still doing stuff over there in the dark. And you could be listening to the best minister in the world. And if you're still over there doing stuff in the booth in the back, in the corner, in the dark, you, that's what you're going to yield. That's what I'm talking about. You have cleaned your life up. you sitting there receiving for the word of God from a man or woman of God. And you're applying it. And you're still spinning. That's who's breathing on what's in you. So you're going to yield what they can yield. You're not going to go higher than what you're listening to or who you're being fed by. You will yield and be an extension of them. Thus, you will become a servant of, of, of corruption as well. That's why he said in the word that they would go on, they would go on deceiving and being deceived. These people are deceived. Because believe it or not, a lot of them believe they're the Lord's. They are deceived. And they go on deceiving and being deceived. And then you will be deceived and go on deceiving. And it goes on and on. 
Just like those of us who are light, light others. Okay, let's read verse 20. For if after, okay, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, they escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord, you, per, you escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They are, again, catch this, for if after they have escaped, that means you got brought out, he saved you. The pollutions of the world, that's all your filth and everything the world put in you and everything that came down your generational line. Through the knowledge of the Lord, you escape this through the knowledge of the Lord Christ Jesus. If they are again entangled, that means if you go back, even, I want y'all to catch this. You escape, but you get entangled by listening to a servant of corruption. That means you're entangled again. Catch this. If they get entangled again, they're in and overcome. That means if you get entangled and overcome, that means if you keep listening to these people, if you keep following to these people, if you keep getting fed by these people, it will overcome you and it will be in you too. At that point, you will overcome. Okay? Their latter end, catch this, your latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You're going to come out worse because you got saved. Here in Christ, you got up on the servant of corruption. You kept receiving that word because if you, if you spend a time with the Lord too, He's going to start talking to you about that person. But many of you, because of partiality, you won't hear what the Lord telling you about that person. So you keep going. You keep listening. I ain't talking about other people telling you about them. The spirit. You keep listening and then you overcome. You're going to be worse off in the end when you think you're getting cleaned up. Okay. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. You would have been better if you'd have never even heard Christ. Then for you to go under some false teacher and keep listening to him until they corrupt you too. Because at that point, you are ensnared when you're listening to him. When you keep listening, you're ensnared. This is a process, y'all. And then eventually, because trust me, you can't get overcome unless you're ignoring the voices that the Lord is sending. If he's sending me, he's sending other people, he's speaking to you at home, and you still won't turn from this, this teacher because you, you're looking at the fruit of their life. You're entangled, but eventually you will be overcome and now that's whose servant you are. And they are servants of corruption, which means they are servants of Satan. Okay. For it had been better that they not have known the way of righteousness. than after they have known it to turn from the holy command, the holy commandment delivered unto them. Love the Lord thy God with all their heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. How do you love him? Obey his voice. Do what he tell you to do. Okay. Obey his voice. But it, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb that the dog, because that's what we do, that's what we were called before we were saved. That's what they call you in the older days, okay? And it, it, that's a spiritual meaning, but I'm going to keep on going. Is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that has washed herself turns back to the wallowing in the mire. You done turn back to filth when you listen to these false teachers and you are overcome of them. And listen to what he said. It's going to be hard to pull you back out once you, you're entangled by listening to him. But once you are overcome because they are in you and that word is in you, that means that light is being dispossessed. Dispossessed in the darkness. You're more full of darkness than light now. You're going to be worse off than when you were not saved. Okay? Beware. Don't fall from your own steadfastness. This is the warning. Beware. Don't fall from your own steadfastness. 2 Peter 3 verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know things, see, therefore, beloved, seeing ye know things before, beware, lest also, lest ye being also led away with the error of the wicked. That's a wicked servant. Okay, fall from your own steadfastness. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord is his. Not everyone that preaches Jesus is his. Not everyone ministering the scripture is his. Don't y'all understand this? That's how the enemy got so many. And them are the popular channels. Catch that. Second Peter 3, 13 through 17. Okay. Nevertheless, we according to his promise. We according to his promise. Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Keep your eyes on things that are above, for where your heart is, there so will your treasure be. That means wherever your attention is, that's where you would desire being, 
And that's where you will end up, okay? Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. You may be found of him in peace without spot. What did I just tell you they are? They are spots on your garments. They are blemishes on your garments that you may be found without spot and without blemish. And account the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. The long suffering of the Lord. Who cares if you get rejected? Long suffer. Who cares if people misunderstand you? Long suffer. They judge you wrongly. Long suffer. Okay? And account, account that the long suffering of Lord Jesus, uh, Lord is, is sal the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto us. As verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, if you're unlearned and unstable, rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You rest in the end what these people are teaching when you need to be led by the spirit. Quit looking for popularity. Quit looking for at a girl and at a boy. Quit looking for those who... He won't let me call people out. Okay. Beware. Beware. Even people who say they connected with me. No, sir. The Lord hasn't connected me with nobody. I'm connected in unity of the spirit of the body of Christ as a whole, but I'm connected with no ministry. It's many people he will not let me connect with. He's pulling me away. He's done it more than once. He said, you will not get contaminated. He pulls me away and I have to get used to it. She said, this is the way it's been, okay? Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know things before, beware lest she also being led astray with the error of wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. Many of you going to fall from your own. You've been doing good. Listen to good ministry, but you listen to so many people. You done got under a servant of corruption who done made merchandise of you. And you're going to be overcome by this. And this word is coming forth because it's a warning. You are entangled now, but many are about to be overcome. And once you are overcome, it's going to be very hard because you're going to believe them so hard. Once you're overcome, it's going to be very hard. You're going to be uh, very hard. You're going to be um, worse off than you were when you were unsaved. And that's bad. Could you imagine you're worse off than when you were unsaved? Just think about that. Unsaved, you were set toward hell. Definition of steadfast. To be firm and dependable and especially loyal. Ain't no loyalty going for it. Everybody out to get their own. Working with wounds. Working with wounds. And paving their own way. Striving and toiling. And making merchandise of the young in Christ, of the naive in Christ, of the unlearned in Christ. Don't y'all understand, even the people y'all sowing seed into that were not sent by the Lord and doing and going their own way, y'all are bidding them steadfastness. Y'all are becoming partakers of what they're doing. You, I, It's a good thing to give. It matters where you give. I cannot tell you this. That'd be like if somebody's sitting there building a the house. Like, I know it's a good thing that they're going to build the temple. But, but who y'all think going to sit in that temple when it's built over there in it? Y'all think the Lord going in there after he sat in it? The Lord going to rebuild it. I'm going to leave it right there. Because it's going to get rebuilt. But the abomination that make desolate going to sit in it. So why are we praising about that right now? That's just prophecy being fulfilled. It's going to be rebuilt and the Antichrist going to sit in it. You think that Jesus is going to go sit where the Antichrist sat? Think, y'all. You think Jesus is going to go sit where the Antichrist is about to sit? The Bible said he's going to sit there and call himself God and the abomination that make desolation go sit in the holy place. And you think Jesus is going to go sit in that same seat? That thing going to be just, that thing going to be washed in the air. Y'all better pay attention. Okay? Please pay attention. It's going to be real belt, but the, who going to sit in it first? The Antichrist. Jesus ain't sitting where the Antichrist sat. Let me keep going. The next definition of steadfastness. Marked by firm determination and resolution that means that's you resolution this is that's that we gaze straight face set like flint fortified brazen wall unshakable he said that those who are shakable unshakable will remain if you obey it will be well with you jeremiah 7 through 23 but this thing commanded i them saying obey my voice obey my voice 
Obey my voice. That's what. Obey his voice. Because he's going to override even good things. And you got to know when he's going to override even a good thing. you about to do a good thing and he'll override it. Because you got to get used to lend his voice. His self-will. Just like th th today when I went to deliver this message, he dropped one right there and said, this is urgent. This go this before you start anything else. Overrode even the word he gave. You got to learn. Because you're going to be about to do a good thing and that override is going to save your life. You've got to learn to hear. Listen to all these messages good, but you shouldn't be listening to none more than you studying the Bible and sitting in quiet hearing the Lord yourself. But this thing commanded I them, saying, obey my voice and, and, and I will be your God and you shall be my people. And ye will and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. It will only be well with you if you obey his voice. His voice is his audible voice, but his voice is also people he sends. Quit looking for the popular ones, y'all. Out of timing, out of alignment, out of order, in the darkness. The enemy is getting you out of timing, out of alignment, out of order. And many of you are walking around in darkness. For you have given your ears to service of corruption. Okay? I'm going to put the rest of this in the blog because it's the stuff I put. If we live with, stick with, and die with, we will also reign with. The only way you're going to reign with him is if you live with him, stick with him, die with him. What did he die? Die in his flesh. He established in you a yoke system. He saved you and brought you unto himself. He didn't save you to go your own way. He is establishing in you a yoke system. Become fellowship of his suffering because it gets it from head knowledge trying to love him to your heart. And that is how you fellowship. Nobody said this walk was easy. He said he would be with you because you're going to be betrayed by many. Many of people that you love in the door. If you ever get around them, you're going to see who they really are. So please stay before the Lord. Ask him to show you every hidden one, every lie that came as a person, every lie that came as a place, every lie that came as a thing and a destruction, a sound, a vibration, a frequency, and cast it out from you. And he will show you if you be willing. How's it that you be willing? You ain't got somebody so high that you can't hear nothing wrong with them. Because at that point, that person has become your God. That person has become your idol. Again, this message. Servants of corruption, though they promise you liberty, the Lord calls them brute beasts. They are spots on your garment. Find the spots on your garment. Who are you listening to? Who are you around? Who are pretending they are with you and walking with you? Who is a spot on your garment? Go before the Lord, beloved. Grace be with you and I love you all. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. First Corinthians 9 11 reads, if we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace. Be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.